when you're in a ketogenic diet, we've actually done a number of studies. You know what we found? When you immediately switch from a ketogenic diet to a carbohydrate diet, do you know what happens? You gain fat like this. I mean, it is so rapid, you wouldn't believe it. What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here. Hey, we get a lot of messages every single day and one question that comes to us all the time is, how do I get off of a ketogenic diet? You know, a lot of people want to transition back to carbohydrates, so they ask me, how do I do this? Well, it's not that easy, but I'm gonna give you the top three ways to do it so that you can smoothly transition into it. Guys, if this is your first time to the channel and you love the content, make sure that you hit the like button uh, subscribe if you want more videos like this. And if you really want to be in the inner mix, make sure you smack that bell. So when you're in a ketogenic diet, we've actually done a number of studies. You know what we found? When you immediately switch from a ketogenic diet to a carbohydrate diet, do you know what happens? You gain fat like this. I mean, it is so rapid, you wouldn't believe it. And it's actually really similar. Like you kind of see like bodybuilders who are on a contest, when they go back to normal dieting, they gain fat really quick because they've been on a low carb diet for a long time. Same thing with keto, we're not used to carbs, we don't use carbohydrates well, so we gain fat fast. Can we avoid that? So here's my top three ways. Number one way is this. During the transition, start by low, not by upping your carbs, lowering fats, and upping protein accordingly. So let's say your fats are 70, 80% of your diet, lower them down to anywhere from 30 to 40% of your diet and replace those calories with protein, okay? What will happen is your body will convert some of the protein over to carbohydrates, but you're not gonna gain fat because it's very difficult to gain fat with protein. So that's the first step is reintroduce carbs in your diet via gluconeogenesis. Um, that's converting protein over to carbohydrates. So that's a way you're not gonna gain fat, but your body starts to get used to carbohydrates, okay? Number two, once you've hit that phase and you feel like you're not really gaining fat, that might be a two week period of time. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna start to up your carbs to basic needs for just maintaining function. That's anywhere from 120 to 180 grams of carbs a day, okay? And that's gonna transition you back into being more reliant on carbohydrates as fuel. Now that would be low carbohydrate, but when you do that, you're gonna do lower glycemic carbohydrates like oatmeal, sweet potatoes, vegetables, uh, things that are higher in fiber. So again, what you're gonna do there is you'll start to lower your fat and protein around the same while you're upping your carbs to 120 to 180 a day. And once you transition to that and you feel like, hey, I'm not gaining fat, I wanna go back to what I was eating carb-wise prior to keto, say that's 250 grams a day, your third step is to do it in a carbohydrate cycling fashion. So what you're gonna do is, your low day is going to be more like that higher protein day I told you that was low carb. Then you're gonna have a moderate day, which is going to essentially be that 120 to 180. And then you're gonna have your high day, which is gonna be your 200 to 250 grams of carbs. And you're gonna cycle like that. When you feel like you're not getting any fat, now you can fully transition to having those carbs every day. But even then, I'd still probably institute in two low carb days a week and maybe one of those higher protein days a week. So guys, that's my three things. One, again, make sure that you up proteins to replace fat, gluconeogenesis. Two, then you're gonna transition into just carbohydrate needs, 120 to 180. Then you're gonna do that carbohydrate cycling piece before fully transitioning. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time.